Yesterday when I was young and the spirit song. Yesterday when I was young, the taste of life was sweet as rain upon my tongue. I tease life as if it were a foolish game. The way the evening breeze may tease a candle flame. Thousand dreams I dream, the splendid things I planned. I always feel to last on waking shifting sand. I live by night and shun the naked light of day. And only now I see how the years ran away. Yesterday, when I was young, so many happy songs were waiting to be sung. So many wayward pleasures laid store for me and so much pain my dazzled eyes refused to see i ran so fast that time and life ran out i never stopped to think what life was all about and every conversation i can now recall concerned itself with me and nothing else at all. There are so many songs in me that won't be sung. I feel the bitter taste of tears upon my tongue. It's time for me to pay for yesterday when I was young. Last week, we noted that even though a believer may walk uh, for many years in fellowship with God the Father and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that even though a believer may have learned much at the feet of the Master and acquired much spiritual and practical knowledge in walking with Him, still, gray hair and the wisdom it symbolizes is no sure protection from moral failure. Any believer can play the fool. King David and his census in 2 Samuel 24. King Uzziah, his intrusion into the priest's office in 2 Chronicles 26. Solomon and his building of altars of sacrifice for his foreign wives in 1 Kings 11. All, all of these bear witness that the pride of life is a most powerful temptation. But the pride of life is not just a temptation for the gray-haired, but even for a believer in the prime of life. And this we'll see with King Hezekiah. 
So uh, let's go ahead and uh, look to the Lord and ask for his help and his blessing. Our God and our Father, we want to thank you tonight for the opportunity we have to open the Word of God. As we've just been talking, uh, your Word is like milk for a newborn baby, that we need it in order to grow. So help us today, to tonight, to uh, receive from your Word that we might be strengthened in our spiritual life and honor you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd like to turn uh, tonight in 2 Kings chapter 20. We're going to read about a king named Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was a, a great king. He was a good man, a godly man. But at the age of 39, something happened in his life. Now he had had many victories in his life and God had blessed him. But the age of 39, he gets a message from God. And so I'm going to begin reading in 2 Kings chapter 20 and verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Now, remember, as I said, if you read the previous chapters, this is a good man. He's a godly man. He's 39 years old, you find, uh, as you uh, look in the previous chapters. He's in the, you know, the, the real vigor of life. He's got his whole life before him. And, and now he receives a message from God through the prophet that uh, he's going to die. And God, tell, God tells him to put his house in order. And that's important. You know, that uh, uh, everyone has to, uh, when we leave this world, we have to be pass on to our family, uh, our children, uh, not just uh, physical things, so we need a will, but we need to pass on spiritual things to them. And particularly if we know that uh, our time is short, you know, it's good to get the family together and just remind them of what... Uh, it means to receive Christ and what it means to live for the Lord. But of course, Hezekiah's first thought when he heard this, now he's sick. So when you're sick and you pray to God, you're wanting to hear the news that uh, you're going to get better. And it's not always the news God has for us. You know, things don't always work out the way we want it to, even when we're living for God. And uh, we shouldn't be confused by that. We shouldn't be disappointed. God has a perfect plan. And so Hezekiah had two choices. He could say, uh, yes, Lord, amen, I'll set my house in order. Or he could do what he did do. And we're going to read that in verse 2. Then he, Hezekiah, turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. So he did the same thing you and I'd probably do. Uh, bad news, you got uh, terminal cancer. You turn to the Lord and say, Lord, uh, please help me. Uh, I, want to, I want to live. And, and we have a whole... Uh, you know, a lot of reasons why we want to live. And, uh, and so we don't want to die. But, you know, the Apostle Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So for a Christian, death is not something to fear. It's not like, you know, if you die when you're young, you're going to miss something, miss out on something. That's what we think. We're going to miss out on something in this world. But, you know, God has a perfect plan. Uh, uh, he says, uh, Paul said in Philippians 1, uh, that to live is Christ, to die is gain. He said, while I'm here, I'm going to live for Christ, but if I die, that'll be even better. He said, to depart and be with Christ is far better. So as a believer, uh, we should not fear death. Uh, God uh, is the one that our, our lives are in his hand, and so we don't have to fear death whenever he might choose to call us home. So Hezekiah, but Hezekiah prayed. God was merciful. In verse 4, 
And it came to pass for Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. Verse 6. Now this is interesting. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. So Isaiah has already delivered the message that Hezekiah is going to die. Hezekiah immediately is praying to God before Isaiah ever leaves the palace area. Uh, and uh, God tells him to go back. And he says, listen, Hezekiah, I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. I'm going to give you 15 more years to live. And then we find out, and we, we can read it in the previous chapter too, that Hezekiah had more than one problem. It wasn't just his health, but the Assyrians were attacking Jerusalem. So he had a war going on. So he's got a war on the one hand. He's sick and is going to die on the other. And now God heals him and says that he will deliver him from his enemies. So that's wonderful. And so we're going to read now in uh, uh, verse 7. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. So evidently had some kind of boil, maybe cancer. And he, they laid these figs on it, and uh, uh, he was healed. And verse 8 says, And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? So they uh, Isaiah tells them to make this uh, medication to put on uh, the uh, boil the sore, but Hezekiah, he immediately says, well, wait a minute. Uh, how do I know that I'm going to live? How do I know that in three days I'm going to be healed? So Hezekiah wants a sign. I mean, you would think that just Isaiah coming back to him and telling him that God told him he was going to recover him, going to add 15 years, that God had seen his tears, heard his prayer, that that would be confirmation enough for Hezekiah that the Lord uh, was on his side and is going to deliver him from the Assyrians, but he wants even more assurance. And so this is absolutely incredible what God does. Verse 9, And Isaiah said, This shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? He's talking about how they kept time, you know, with a sundial and how the shade would show the time of day. And so he asked Hezekiah, do you want me to move the sundial forward so it'll be later in the day? Or you want me to move it back? So it'll be earlier in the day. Wow, that's, that's unbelievable that, that God was willing to do this. Verse 10, Hezekiah answered, it's a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Nay, let the shadow return back 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. So, I mean, this is what an incredible miracle. I mean, God is uh, touching the whole universe, the solar system, and he's moving the sun. However he did it, you know, the mir it was a miracle. And he gave him uh, uh, the answer to his request. And just to give Hezekiah assurance, just to give him peace, even after he told him he was going to be healed. So this just shows the small faith that we have even great men have small faith. Now, this is the interesting part. Hezekiah's got 15 years. <clears throat> What's he going to do with those next 15 years? Ah, verse 12. At that time, Berodeach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for you he heard that Hezekiah 
had been sick. Now, I'm going to read you from the same uh, uh, event that is recorded in Second Chronicles chapter 32. <clears throat> uh, I want you to see why the Babylonians, remember the Babylonians, they worshiped the heavens. Uh, they watched uh, the stars. They were astrologers and astronomers. And so uh, in uh, chapter uh, 32 of Second Chronicles, in verse 31, listen. Howbeit in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land, God left him, left Hezekiah, to try him, that he might know all that was in his heart. So what that's saying is that when these uh, uh, this letter came from Babylon, then God was testing Hezekiah to see how he would respond. Here is this great king in Babylon, and he's sending congratulations to Hezekiah uh, in concern for his sickness, but he's also talking to him about this great wonder that the Babylonians saw also, that there was a miracle that was done. The sundial went back uh, 10 degrees. And so uh, Hezekiah, look at Hezekiah's response. Now, this is important. Uh, Hezekiah receives this letter from this great king. When the Assyrians, who are attacking Jerusalem at this time, they sent just in the last chapter that we are reading in Second Kings and, and chapter, we're in chapter 20 and chapter 19, <clears throat> uh, this uh, Sennacherib is the name of the king, the Assyrian king. He was attacking Hezekiah and he sent a threatening letter to Hezekiah. And you know what Hezekiah did when he got that letter? This threatening letter? In verse 14 of chapter 19, of second kings and hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it and hezekiah went up into the house of the lord and spread it before the lord in other words when he was in great danger and this great king is outside the walls and sends a threatening letter hezekiah takes that letter and he goes in uh, before the lord and he opens it and he reads it before the Lord, because he's crying out to God for help, because he's in a terrible situation with uh, these uh, Assyrians going to attack him. But now he receives another letter from the king of Babylon, and this is a congratulatory letter. This is a letter that uh, uh, Hezekiah felt like he was receiving some kind of commendation, some kind of praise from the king of Babylon, and he didn't take that before the Lord. And I want to tell you something. Uh, we pray when we're in a difficult situation, just like Hezekiah was, and he's, gonna, he's uh, going to die, uh, or very sick, but even before God told him he was going to die, we pray, we cry out to God. But what about times when we receive blessing, when things are really going our way? Instead of uh, taking those times before the Lord and, and realizing that there's a danger for us, not just when the enemy's outside, but the enemy might be sending a letter and telling us how great we are. That's a danger also. So what did Hezekiah do? In chapter 20, verse 13 of Second Kings, Hezekiah hearkened unto them, unto the king of Babylon, and showed them. So these ambassadors have come. They sent letters and they sent a present brought a present to uh, Hezekiah, and uh, Hezekiah hearkened unto them, listened to them, showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold, the spices, the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, and all that was in his treasures, and all that was in his house, and all that was in his dominion that Hezekiah showed. There was nothing that Hezekiah showed them not in all his dominion. So, uh, Hezekiah is, is showing off. Here is this great king, and he's flattered by the fact that they came, flattered by the fact that they brought him gifts, flattered by the fact that, you know, God had done a miracle, and these Babylonians uh, understood that it was done for him. And so he shows off everything he has, all his riches, all his armory, and, and uh, you know, everything. Now listen, 
Isaiah comes to him now. God sends Isaiah, the prophet, to Hezekiah. Look what he says. Verse 14. Then came Isaiah, the prophet, unto King Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. Now, verse 15, listen. And Isaiah said, What have they seen in thy house? What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All things that are in mine house they have seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. So, what did he, what did he confess to? He didn't realize it, but he was wrong in God's sight. He didn't show uh, the Babylonians all his treasure. What was the greatest treasure that Hezekiah had? It was his knowledge of God. It was his relationship with Jehovah. It was this God that had healed him, that had uh, given him 15 more years. It was the God that had taken the Assyrians away. This was his greatest treasure. This is what a believer, a believer's greatest treasure is. It's, it's his God. It's his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And yet, you know, we'll get a nice car and drive around town and let people look at our nice car. Uh, you know, maybe have a big boom box in there, roll down the window, make sure we shake everybody good that's next to us at the stop sign or stoplight, right? I mean, we show off. And yet what we don't tell them is the most important treasure we have. And that's our knowledge of God through faith in Jesus Christ, that we're saved. We run into people all the time, and we don't tell them the greatest gift we have is the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And, and Hezekiah, a good man, godly man, he, he forgot that the enemy is not just a roaring lion like the Assyrians out battling them, but the enemy is also like a serpent hissing. The enemy can come in a gang that uh, is going to, uh, you know, do you damage because you quit the gang, because, you know, you're going to live for Christ. He can roar and, and, and uh, bring force against you, or the enemy can come against you with a miniskirt, you know, like a serpent. It, but it's both of them are the enemy. And this is flattery right now that Hezekiah is succumbing to. And so Isaiah, the prophet, tells him, uh, Hear the word of the Lord. The days come that all that is in thine house, that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day, shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. So what's going to happen? Well, what do you think happens when you invite the enemy in and you show him all your stuff? You open your vault and you show him everything that you have? Well, they went back to Babylon and they started making a plan about how they're going to attack Jerusalem and take all of Hezekiah's gold and silver and all his stuff. And that's exactly what they end up doing. Now, I want us to see one, one other verse that I like to read in uh, uh, a comment in Second Chronicles uh, chapter 32. This is a chapter I read from earlier. But this is God's comment upon what Hezekiah did. This is uh, 2 Chronicles 32, verse 25. But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him. For his heart was lifted up. Therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. In other words, God brought judgment upon Hezekiah, but Hezekiah humbled himself. He repented. And you know, that's what a believer has to do. When you become a believer in Jesus Christ, you don't walk sinless. No. Hopefully you sin less, but you're not sinless. And so the Bible says that when we sin, we're to confess our sins because God's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what Hezekiah did. He said, God, I was wrong. I was wrong. I had pride in my heart, and I'm sorry for that. Now, the, the consequences are still going to be there because he already showed the king of Babylon, uh, the Babylonians, all of his, his riches. 
So the consequences are not going to go away. He has planted a seed of, of greed in the heart of the king of Babylon. Uh, Babylon will attack uh, Jerusalem uh, in later years. But Hezekiah did what you and I need to do as believers. If you're a believer, when you sin, you take it to the Lord in prayer. You cry out to God. And so you remember as a believer that it's not just the hard times that you have to be before the Lord and take to the Lord in prayer like Hezekiah when he was sick, but the good times. Because in the good times, we can be proud. We can be lifted up with pride. And that's just as great a sin. And it's, it's, uh, uh, it's easier when there's problems in our lives to be cast upon God when things, then when things are going well, we tend to neglect the things of God. And, and that verse again, it says, Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him. In other words, God has given his son for you and I. He's given the greatest gift, given us salvation if you're a believer. And if you're not, you need to trust Christ in this very moment and be saved. But every believer has a salvation which is eternal has, has uh, blessings in this life of forgiveness of sins, of peace of heart and mind, knowing that God is watching over him. So many blessings. And we're to respond in a way that shows we're thankful to God for what he's done in giving his son and what he's done in being with us throughout our days of our lives. So may we, uh, each one, have a thankful heart and be watchful that we guard our hearts above all that's guarded. Guard your heart so that we won't dishonor the Lord. And if we fall, if we fail, immediately get back to God just like Hezekiah did and confess your sin and repent and leave it the consequences with the Lord. Amen? Let's pray. Our gracious God and our Father, we thank you for this lesson on Hezekiah. And, and we see ourselves in, in this man how it's so easy for us to, uh, to cry out for help when we have problems. And, and yet when things are going well, we tend to be loose and slack and forget about uh, you and, and uh, even maybe set our Bibles aside and, and uh, don't pray. So help us, O oh God. And, and if someone is without Christ right now, we pray that they would turn to the Lord and realize the great love that he has for them. And if there's a believer with sin in their life, uh, may that person right now, that believer, uh, repent, confess their sins, that they may, might be like Hezekiah and be brought back into the good graces of God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.